What is up everybody? Joe Everest, the fence expert. You know, since I was a kid, I loved coming to ball games. Baseball is my kind of sport. I grew up with it. But one thing I hadn't considered as a fence guy is all the different types of fence that go into making a baseball stadium tick. So we came to our local Major League Baseball affiliate baseball stadium, Hammonds Field, right here in Springfield, Missouri. We've talked to a couple guys about what kind of fence is involved in keeping this baseball stadium going and, more importantly, keeping the fans safe. But before we get into that, the three best ways you can help support this channel are liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that notification bell. Top three ways to help the channel, best part is, they're all free for you guys. With all that being said, let's get into it. All right guys, so for today's video, we've got Derek, who's been gracious enough to give us a little bit of his time. Uh, now Derek, you're Director of Field Operation here at Hammonds Field. That's a big title. What does the Director of Field Operations do at Hammonds Field? I'm responsible for maintaining the playing surface and everything that goes along with it. Uh, also, some stadium operation stuff. I kind of help out up in the stadium. Uh, kind of a, a blanket coverage there, but my main main duties are taking care of the dirt, the grass, pitcher mound, home plate, bullpens, and making sure they're up to standards for the players and all that goes with that. Gotcha. So, so probably so when I'm watching uh, the baseball game, really the playing field is yes. kind of your your domain that's, here. That's that's my baby now. Yes, that's gotcha. correct. Yeah. Gotcha. So as an extension of the field, what we're going to talk about today is the fence that kind of goes around the perimeter of the field. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like what you guys have up here is, is eight foot tall. Eight foot tall, yeah. Okay. And a vinyl coated chain link. So green kind of ties in with the yeah. theme here. Now, is vinyl coated for a reason, is that right? Yeah, it's, for, it's kind of a player safety. So, it, you know, if a guy's that run to full speed and crashes into this, it's not going to cut him up with a traditional chain link. And it's kind of covers all those seams and all the stuff that goes along with the chain link fencing. Yeah, right. So because when we look at galvanized fencing, uh, sometimes you'll see some sharp edges where that galvanizing is dripped off during the process. Yeah, I can see that being a real issue if a player at speed <laughs> yeah. comes up against this yeah. fence. Now, it's also probably a little bit for guest safety as well. Is that right? Yeah, uh, this this particular area, uh, sometimes people are behind the fence watching the game, kind of a good view of the good view of the field and the players. and. Uh, Kind of want to protect them as well on that back side of that fence as well. Yeah, yeah. Keep keep uh, high speed balls out of their laps. Sort of yeah, thing. yeah. Now it looks like the structure, so the post and the rail are protected as well. Yeah, those have got uh, four inch plywood back foam padding with vinyl wrap on it. Basically, if a guy's running full speed and bangs into that, it's going to absorb that blow a little bit of that post. And sure. same if they're going up to rob a home run, they're reaching over that padding actually wraps around the post on top, kind of protect them from getting hung up in. Uh, the connections and all that's going on up there. Well, that's a good point too, because at the top, we know that the chain link fence is typically knuckled over, leaving some sharp yeah. edges there as well. I tell you what, you really get some perspective when you're down here on the field of someone scaling this thing to rob a yeah. home run. I have a, a completely new appreciation <laughs> for that. I tell you what, let's transition over to some shorter uh, perimeter, maybe not fencing, but uh, perimeter structure to talk about this padding. All right, sounds great. All right, so to get a better look at the padding itself, we're over at the uh, home team bullpen. This is basically where pitchers and catchers warm up. Yeah, that's right. right. Shameless plug for the uh, sponsor behind us. So tell me a little bit about this padding. It looks it looks like it's a pretty spe specific product. Yeah, so it's uh, it's got a vinyl wrap on the outside. It's got a uh, plywood backing, half-inch plywood backing. And then it's got four inches of foam that's wrapped up against that plywood, especially protecting Ever the players from this uh, six inch wide concrete wall that's back here. Absolutely. You would not want to hit this at speed. No. Tell me about the padding itself. So is it, are there, is that a specification, four inch plywood back, that sort of thing? Yeah, that's a standard specification for padding. Um, okay. You see around all the ballparks across the country. You know, we got different heights going from stadium to stadium. Obviously we have eight foot pads out in the outfield. Yeah. And then our four foot around the inside perimeter here and it transitions as we go up the wall in left field there. Okay, but typically they're always a four inch with yeah, a plywood back. Yeah. Interesting. And the vinyl coating, so probably that is also for player safety, but maybe longevity as well. Yeah, longevity, the pads, uh, obviously we're using the weather, the plywood backing on the back is going to be a weather treated, pressure okay. treated lumber. And then okay. the, that vinyl wrap protecting that foam, keeping the moisture out. Each pad has weep holes on the bottom, allowing any moisture it does get in to uh, work out. Okay. That's why you always see there's a gap on the bottom, and that's yeah. mainly to to keep those pads a long-term life, those pads go and let that water exit. 
So, so talking about lifespan of the pads, is there an average life expectancy to the pads or does it depend on use? It depends on use, uh, depends on environment, uh, shade, sun factors in that. Obviously the, the vinyl fades, so a lot, of, a lot of times you tend to replace that once it kind of starts to fade just from a, a look of the stadium feel. Um, yep. a typical lifespan is probably eight years, I would say. On okay. Most yeah. Okay. Very good. And so when you replace the padding, do you replace it just as a full kit or do you maybe resurface it? You can resurface it. We've done that several times. Guys will poke holes in it with their cleats, the vinyl, and oh, we'll take yeah. them off. And they're all mounted with two brackets on the back that just kind of hold it onto the wall. So you can just pop them off and okay. patch those patch those holes up. And then, of course, you, there's advertising around the stadium and we can wrap those with vinyl as well to make the advertising, yes. Okay, very good, very good. Well, guys, I think that about wraps up the interior perimeter security here at the Hammond Stadium. Derek, I appreciate your time. I appreciate uh, Hammond's Field for being so gracious with uh, letting us come in and video. Yeah, thanks for coming out. You bet. All right, guys, so that concludes another video on what fence makes a baseball stadium tick. What did I miss? What haven't I covered yet? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Also, another reminder, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. Those are three of the top ways you can help me support the channel, and it's totally free on your end. Until next time, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. I'll see you at the ballgame.